One start for the Cowboys since 08 uh, with some standout highlights. Des Bryant made a one-handed grab with Jonathan Joseph inside of his jersey. Take a look at that. That put the Cowboys in field goal range to win the game. Obviously, it was the play of the game that, that, that Tony uh, made to Dez. Dez climbs up over that guy. I only saw it once from my vantage point, so I don't have the best view of it, but uh, it looked like it was an incredible play. You know, we talk a lot about contested catches. I don't know that there's a better guy in the league who can make those kinds of contested catches than Dez Bryant, and he certainly did it at a critical moment for us. You know, Tony made a great throw on it, giving him a chance, and that certainly was the difference-making play to give us the chance to win it. All right. And Tony Romo moved well in the pocket. You can ask J.J. Watt, who missed Romo on a tackle uh, while he threw a touchdown to Terrence Williams. He looked good. Dallas wins the in-state battle. Bayless, uh, what's your takeaway from the win? You know, obviously, just let me get this out of the way. Spectacular circus clutch catch by Des Br yep. Bryant, as I tweeted yesterday. Des for Prez. I, that's how excited <laughs> I was. I don't know if I want to go that far, right, but, but the idea. we could be in some trouble right. there. The but idea but, uh, of, but you no, know, yeah. the, you get the idea. Yeah, sure. And obviously, he went up and got that ball because he just wanted that ball more than Jonathan Joseph did. And that's Des Bryant. That's what I do love about him. Now, I'm going to be objective about my Dallas Cowboys. They should have won this game by 21 points. Uh. The Dallas Cowboys are going to have to play much better than we saw yesterday, at least much cleaner than we saw yesterday, if, in fact, they're going to do what I predicted before the year that they would do, which is win the NFC East. I will say this. They were very lucky yesterday that Johnny Manziel wasn't the quarterback for the Houston Texans or they would have lost that game. Remember, Houston had a chance. They had a chance to pick Why Johnny Manziel. Why do you Manziel say that? Because he would have lit him up yesterday. Ryan Fitzpatrick, I'm like, thank you that Ryan Fitzpatrick is the quarterback <laughs> of the Houston Texans because that's how Dallas survived that game. The point is that the Dallas Cowboys, under dire circumstances, managed to do something they would not have done last year. They won the football game because this is a different team than it was last year or the year before, the year before, the year before. This team has a winner's backbone to it that it did not have a year ago, and I'm going to stick by that. This team, we saw DeFumble Murray, DeFumble in the first quarter, as he had in three previous games. We saw Dwayne Harris fumble a punt. We saw Terrence Williams drop what I think would have been a touchdown pass near the goal line. We saw Tony Romo go gunslinger again and throw an interception on what could have been a touchdown pass down near the goal line. And despite all that, this team bounced back and still won the game. Yet Tony Romo got, you, you mentioned the, the two throws that he made. I didn't love either throw because they are both bailout, fall away, no look throws because he doesn't want to take the shot right in the kisser that you're going to have to take. He did not stand in against either one of those rushes. He just flung it up and it could have been caught by either team to me. But in these two cases, Terrence Williams came down with the yeah. first one, and it was huge. And obviously, Des Bryant set up the game-winning field goal with the second catch. I don't love it, but the point was, in the end, they won a game against a team that is no joke on defense and no joke with Arian Foster running the football. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it in the bank. They are 4-1, and one, and now they're going to have to play much better, obviously, they're, if they're even going to stay on the field in Seattle next Sunday. <sighs> I think the biggest joke are all of you Cowboy fans. You folks are pathetic. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Because you would think that the Dallas Cowboys, that's, this highlights and illuminates the level of ineptitude that has existed with the Dallas Cowboys for years and years and years. Because y'all are so happy that they are 4-1 and one, that you would think the Dallas Cowboys actually won something other than a regular season game. Y'all are just pathetic. Okay, and it's just mm. destiny that y'all are going to lose because everybody's so hyped. <laughs> and you know, you got people calling up my radio show. That's right, Mad Dog Radio, Sirius XM, uh -huh. every day, one to three, uh -huh. one to three p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Here's the deal: you just absolutely kill me because. The Dallas Cowboys went up against a backup quarterback, somebody who has proven he can't be successful as a starting quarterback in the NFL. He's had his moment. Okay. Oh, stop it. So what? Who cares? Everybody has their moments. So what? Well, I mean, he was a starter so, in Buffalo know, you know, for a while. You know, Matt Schaub had a few moments, okay? I mean, just stop it. This is what I'm talking about here. Foster still had 157 he did. yards. He was still great. Still averaged nearly seven yards a I carry. Agree. Andre Johnson didn't have the biggest day. Neither did Hopkins or anybody else. They only passed for 154 yards or 100. 
160, 76 mm. yards. Yep. I'm sorry, 154 yards to be exact for Patrick. Yep. It doesn't matter. They still almost won the game. It's still forced overtime. Why? Because somehow, some way, all you did by highlighting what Dallas could have done but didn't do is how Dallas tends to get in its own way. They're all about theater. The Dallas Cowboys definitely, I will give you credit for this, Dallas Cowboys definitely appear to be a team that has fi is finding ways to win and not get in their own way, yep. which is different than what we've seen mm -hmm. from them the last four years. I'll give you that, but it's only week five. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Week five's the, pretty deep the, into the season. To I'm me. sorry. You can say it's pretty deep into the season all you want to. I'm thinking it's 11 games to go. I'm thinking there's a whole bunch of divisional games to go I'd and say. beyond. Six and let's see them. what the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys do. Y'all are just pathetic because you look for every little thing mm. to celebrate the Dallas Cowboys. They're 4-1. and one. They're still tied atop the NFC East with the Eagles. Okay, fine. They're relevant. They don't, they don't stink nearly like we thought they were. But we always thought they were going to stink defensively. That's what we thought. We thought their offense was going to be a juggernaut. Last time I checked, Dallas hasn't looked like a juggernaut every game this season offensively. Mm -hmm. They've had their moments. They put up enough points to win, but at the same time, we look at them and we say, wait a minute. We expected their offense to be a bit more fluid. We expected their offense to be a bit more, uh, you know, explosive. I'm looking at Mark DeMarco Murray. Yes, he fumbled. Okay, that's four fumbles on mm -hmm. the season, I believe. Skip Bailey's averaged 4.4 yards of carry rush for 136 yards yesterday. Forget all of that. He ran 31 times. How much longer are you going to be able to keep that up? Because, see, to me, that's... How about 11 games? Or 12 or I don't 13 believe or listen, 14. Listen, listen, listen. How do you feel about DeMarco Murray compared to Emmitt Smith? How? Durability, how do protecting the football, both categories. Yeah, Emmitt was the greatest ever at avoiding contact I've ever seen. Okay. And Emmitt Smith, the most he ever rushed for mm -hmm. in a season was 377 carries. Mm -hmm. DeMarco Murray is oh, on pace boy, for yeah. at least over 400 yards. I am saying to you, that this will not last. Somehow, some way. See, what I, let me just put it clear for you cowboy lovers out there, mm -hmm. as pathetic as y'all are. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. What I'm waiting for is for DeMarco Murray to wear down just a little bit. I'm not talking about getting hurt. Mm -hmm. I don't wish that on anybody. I don't know. Okay? No, I don't do that. Don't okay. play like that. Right. I don't do that. I don't wish for him to get hurt or anything, but I will say this. He ain't going to be able to keep this workload up. Mm -hmm. Somehow, some yeah. way. I don't believe that Jason Garrett, and Linehan and those boys are going to go to Dunbar or Randall to rush the football. I think That's they his will. Backup. I'm saying they might try, but they ain't DeMarco Murray. Mm -hmm. There's a reason he's getting 31 carries and Randall got two and Dunbar doesn't have any. I'm saying to you that in, in Murray they trust. And if it ain't Murray, they're going to ultimately lean towards giving more opportunity and chances to Tony Romo. See, that's what I'm waiting, waiting for. On them to get I'm waiting for shot. Tony Romo. I'm waiting for Tony Romo to show up. I'm not talking about a little twisted back. Oh, I, I threw the ball wrong. I twisted my body. I contorted my body. Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm waiting for Tony Romo to go back there and be the gunslinger that he is and saying, you know what? Give me the football, okay? Because DeMarco Murray is working too hard. We need to throw the football more. I'm waiting for that because that's the Cowboys that I know and love. Right. And I'm waiting for that. When they start winning games because Tony Romo's flinging that football, y'all come talk to me. Because I've been saying for years, if you had given DeMarco Murray the ball last year, they would have been in the playoffs. If you had given it to him the year before, they would have been in the playoffs. You didn't give him the football enough. That was your problem because you wanted Romo to save the day. I believe that's who the Cowboys are. And I think all of this is fool's gold. Let's see what